Radio Wales and click on podcasts. Louisa Mal with you on BBC Radio Wales. It's 13 minutes past 11. Lovely to have your company this morning. Now, you know my routine now, Mal, don't yeah. you? When I come into studio every morning, log on okay. to Twitter... All the way through. It is one of the first things I do. You do. And, of course, catch up with everything that, um, you know, people who follow the programme have been doing. And this morning, I spotted a tweet from Jenny in Penarth. And it said, can we please thank Penarth lifeboat crew and the guys at the Cardiff Barrage for seeing that we were in danger and rescuing us on Saturday? And I said, you know what, Jenny, we can do better than that. Come in and say it yourself. <laughs> so here she is, Jenny, Amy and Jack. Lovely to see you all. Lovely to see you so safe and safe sound. And sound isn't it? Um, because as well, I noticed on the uh, the newsroom are telling us this morning that it was the busiest weekend on record for Penarth lifeboat. The RNLI team at Penarth uh, had the busiest day on record at the weekend an amazing 11 launches over two days that's a lot of rescuing isn't it tell us a bit about um your story jenny you you were out sailing you were out on the on the boat now you've been sailing for a little while haven't you well you know only a year and a half really fairly new to it so we do do everything by the book (laughs) so we were just trying to come back in two hours before high water when it should be nice and safe and we follow the boys in as you know, you should. Yes. And we went to ground, and I didn't understand why. I could just feel that we'd stopped. And um, I do know that if you... if you, I've seen boats go aground there before, and they wait for the water to come back in and, and float off, so I wasn't overly concerned. And the barrage contacted us and said that they thought that we were in danger because they'd been dredging and that our boat was on a ledge and that it might tip. Oh, so they then had already called out the lifeboat crew who came within about two minutes and just made us jump off the boat onto the lifeboat. Goodness me. Just explain that approach to um, the barrage. I mean, w- w- what's it like for, for those of us who haven't sailed in there before? Yeah, as you go in, um, they, the, there's a channel that's dredged and it's meant to be dredged to a certain depth so that we know that we're safe. And you go in by following, by going between the boys which mark the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... If you do that, then you should be safe. Now, I find the perspective of things out at sea, I find it really strange. So I didn't actually notice that the boys weren't in the normal position. I think a lot of more experienced sailors would have either known or know. I've been told now that every February and August, when they dredge, to look out for this. <laughs> um, it, it is an amazing uh, rise and fall of the tide, I suppose. It, it, is it the, I think it's the second highest well, in the, the whole world. It's the biggest, because they've um, put a barrage across the Bay of Funday in Canada, which is where it used to be the biggest. Right. And now... So we're winning. Now we're yes. <laughs> Another first for Wales. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So you guys didn't realise what kind of danger you were in. Amy, were you in the, were you in the boat at the time? Yeah, I was in the boat and I was very, very scared. Were you? Yeah. Tell me a bit about how you were feeling when you realised that you were in a bit of danger. Well, the lifeboat, I didn't really have time to scare, be scared because the lifeboat came out so quickly. So I was really shaky on the lifeboat, but then I realised they told us that the boat wouldn't be, get damaged or anything, and so I got to enjoy the ride on the lifeboat. <laughs> yeah. How did you get from your boat onto the lifeboat? We just had to climb over the side and hop onto the boat. It was quite was it exciting, was it? Yeah. I mean, I know looking on that it could have been dangerous, but there we are, a bit of an adventure. Did you all have life? Yes, that was the everything. first thing they did. They radioed us and they made us say how many people on board and what safety equipment we had. That was the first thing that they asked us. And you had it all? Uh, yeah, of course. Because you're, you're doing it by the book. Exactly. <laughs> by the book. And Jack, you weren't on board, were you? So how no. did you hear about all this? Well, I was at home with my friend Fran and the first I hear about it, I'm getting a phone call from Mum saying, hi, we've just been taken in by the lifeboat. <laughs> No other details whatsoever, so I have this image in my head of our boat floating around the Bristol Channel in, like, derelict condition. (laughs) Yeah, something like that. So I'm racing all the way from my house with my unwitting friend down to the seafront, expecting a traumatised little sister to pick up. I'm there, she's... Get down there. She's beaming as excited as anything. <laughs> so I'm a bit like, what's going on here? <laughs> it, it was wonderful, I suppose, that, the, as you said, the guys on the barrage were, you know, they're obviously looking out for Amazing. people all the time. Yes, I didn't realise that. I thought they sort of looked at the locks and that was it. But but also the lifeboat crew who rescued us then went back to our boat. They made our boat safe. They swam through thick mud and actually had to be towed because it was so thick to get off it. And he stayed with the boat the whole afternoon and then took us back out to it when it was safe and helped us get back on our way. Brilliant really? service. Mm-hmm. I just think it's amazing and I really do want to thank both them and the barrage. Amazing. What, yeah. you, what sort of boat do you have? It's um, a, a sailing yacht, Bavaria, 34 foot. 34 foot? So, mm-hmm. And how many people on board were there? We were, had four on, four including on. Um, a friend's son who had never been on a boat before and I said, absolutely fine. Really oh, cool. yes. <laughs> really calm day. Yes. And she saw him arrive back on the lifeboat. <laughs> 
Oh, goodness me. <laughs> How are your ex-friends, by the way? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> has it put you off or are you still as determined as ever? To it hasn't put me off because I've learned not to panic. You know, since we've had the boat, we've had a few little incidents mm. and each one we've come through and you just learn. And as they say, worse things happen just at sea, <laughs> yes. don't they? I suppose it does make you, re you know, you really have to, um, you know, respect um, yes. the, the sea, I suppose. Yes, and the, you do. And the... I mean, we wouldn't go out in any conditions that we didn't feel able to handle. And as I say, each one is a, a bit of a learning curve. Yes, yeah. Well, a great story and all's well that ends well. Exactly. Yeah. Good for you, yeah. good for you. And you've learned a lesson and... Uh, you're very appreciative of the RNI. Oh, incredibly. Yeah. Great incredibly. service. It is indeed. Lovely to see you all safe and sound. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.